Uh, I might not have been all that uh, jumping up and down about uh, yesterday's uh, election results uh, on the presidential side, but uh, on a couple of local sides, I am absolutely ecstatic. Uh, I, I want to make a slight shift here. Uh, yes, yesterday uh, in the primary elections, I want all of you to weigh in. We saw Anita Alvarez, Cook County State's Attorney, thrown out of office. Uh, Kim Fox was elected. Of course, many people criticized her handling of the Laquan McDonald case. We saw Tim McGinty, uh, Cuyahoga County in Cleveland, uh, who screwed up the Tamir Rice case also thrown out of office. Uh, Mary Kay, I want Mary Kay and Lauren to speak to this first, and that is clearly these folks were targeted. This is an example of voters not just focused on big races, but realizing the district attorney races matter when you talk about social justice. Absolutely, and we worked with community partners in uh, the south and west side of Chicago, and again, record turnout. People are incredibly clear that they have to show up in record numbers and make a statement about we are going to reject the use of the, what the state's attorney did in that case and we are thrilled with the outcome uh, in Chicago and in Cuyahoga County. Uh, Lauren? Yeah, that was a microcosmic ex example of what has to happen on the national level uh, in terms of the coalition. The problem for the Republican Party is they need over 35% of minorities to vote for them to win and they're not going to get that in November. Donald Trump is not going to get that. And that's a huge problem. It's the same math that beat them, that, that lost for Mitt Romney. It's the same math they're facing in November. And in these local races, I mean, you saw what happened with Tim McGinty and Anita Alvarez got thrown out of office because the local community had had enough of both of them. So, you know, th these are the dynamics of our politics. Black and brown communities are controlling the game, not only on the local level in some of these communities, but certainly on the national level. Uh, Carmen and Steve got some breaking news here. Uh, that is 11 a.m. today. President Barack Obama uh, is going to pick his Supreme Court nominee. And he did pick him, and it is Merrick Garland. Uh, we've seen some names uh, leak out. Uh, Carmen, do you believe that the president uh, will have the courage to make an historic appointment uh, and nominate a black woman for the first time to the United States Supreme Court? I mean, I. And the answer was no. I hope so. You've been saying that a lot on your show. And, you know, at least to, to us black women, we feel like we know our, our stake in society. We know that we are uh, going to be the difference between who's going to win and lose an election. So, you know, we feel like uh, President Obama has been there for black women before. Um, but I think that it would be a great appointment. Unfortunately, the Republicans, as usual, are being obstructionists and are going to make it virtually impossible for President Obama to take such a bold move. Well, Steve, Steve. Republicans are going to have an interesting choice because I expect President Obama perhaps to nominate somebody a little more moderate than uh, at this time than a potential pr uh, President Clinton would. So Republicans have to make a choice, you know, do you want to have somebody that may be a little more moderate now or take uh, the risk that Hillary Clinton would nominate somebody more liberal? Uh, I think we're just too polarized right now and I think that this is just going to end up being stalled and decided after November. And I think he is absolutely right. Hey, Mary Kay, this is what I don't understand. First of all, yesterday when I interviewed Hillary Clinton on the Tom Journal Morning Show, I asked her if the president nominated a black woman and the Republicans refused to move on her, would she, if she became president, re-nominate that black woman? She said she would. I don't see, I don't care if the president picks a moderate uh, as opposed to somebody who is progressive. I don't see how the Republicans move on that. So if you pick a moderate, why in the world would you do that when if you go with a progressive choice, you can make, you can use that as a pivotal point in driving out turnout in November. Right. Well, and I can tell you that we had members in the street uh, on Senator Grassley just uh, two days ago uh, saying he's got to do his job. Uh, what we're ready to do all across this country is turn up the heat on the Republican senators who need to do their job when the president makes this uh, nomination today. Lauren? The problem is the Republicans could call their bluff if it's Merrick Garland. They could just say, you know, as Steve just said, they could say this person might be better than what we would get under a President Clinton. And a President Clinton is very likely when you have Donald Trump on the top of your ticket. So if the president is picking a consensus candidate, that would make absolutely no sense. You want to pick somebody that would drive possibly turnout in November, which would probably be a black female. 
but we'll see what he announces at 11. <laughs> Roland, always remember for every action there's a reaction, so if you pick somebody that drives turnout on the Democratic side, it also gives re Republicans an issue to fire up our base as well. And I can tell you that the Democrats have the numbers. The Democrats well, have the numbers to beat that. It, it, here's the deal, uh, and Mary Kay, last comment from you is, if you're Republicans, they're going to be against anybody the president picks anyway. That's right. And so, and so it's six on one hand, half a dozen on the other. So, frankly, if you're the president, you focus on driving your turnout uh, right. for your party versus what's going to happen on the other side. Well, I can tell you our members all across this country, nursing home workers, janitors, security officers, uh, child care workers, have incredible faith in this president to be as bold as he has been in getting health care to 20 million more of us, to protecting uh, the DAPA DACA by the executive order on immigrant, by speaking to us about the grace of God uh, in South Carolina uh, and pushing against all the gun violence in this nation. And so uh, we believe that president is going to show up in this nomination. All right, Mary Kay, we surely appreciate it. Thanks for, uh, for joining us. Thank you. you. You had more faith than I did, and, and your faith was not... Uh brought to fruition because just as uh, uh, Vict uh, Lauren Victoria, or Victoria Lauren, uh, stated, they he picked Garland, and now let's see what's going to happen. But again, I am ecstatic that they kicked out uh, those two uh, DAs, both of which are Democrats, uh, for mishandling uh, those, uh, those two cases.